got your toy? You got your toy? You want me to pull on it? You want me to get your toy? You got it? Get it. Get that toy. Get that toy. All right, I'm about ready to start my work, but first Luna wants to play. So she's got her toy and she's wanting to play. I might have to put her in her kennel so that I can actually get something done here. Um, so let me go ahead and show you my plans for this next hour if I can pull it off. All right. Okay, I've got these faux whiskey barrels that I need to go ahead and drill some holes in the base and fill with a mixture of dirt, uh, some compost, and some vermiculite. Um, so I'm going to start off by drilling some holes in the base of these um, barrels because of some digging I'm going to do. I'm going to save the dirt from that digging to put in these barrels as part of a mixture. Now for the digging we're going to do. I'm going to step back here. Notice we've got a bamboo stick here, a bamboo stick there, a bamboo stick there, a bamboo stick there, there and here. This is where I'm going to dig some post holes for a pergola we're making. And the pergola is going to be made with all this lumber that came in the delivery right here. Look who's in puppy jail. Sorry, Luna Boo, you gotta stand there for a few minutes. I also have to put Luna in her kennel every time the neighbor mows the lawn. She goes wild over the lawnmower. Here she goes. So my neighbor's uh, mowing in the background. There might be a little bit of noise, but that's all right. I think we can handle that. Uh, let me show you what I did. I went ahead and I drilled some holes in some planters. All right, so what you see here in the foreground is a planter next to a bamboo stick that marks where we're going to do a dig for a post hole. So I'm going to dig a post hole here, and the dirt for that post hole is going to go in here, which, by the way, is definitely not quality soil to use for potted plants. However, if I mix it with some compost that I have a, a way to get for free and some vermiculite, which does cost me a little bit of money, I can make a wonderful mix for this planter using part of the regular soil plus some compost and vermiculite. So here's one post hole. Eight feet down is another post hole and a planter to put the dirt in. Another eight feet down is a post hole with a planter to put the dirt in. Across 10 feet, uh, a stick for a post hole and a planter to put the dirt in. Up 8 feet, a post hole, a stick marking a post hole and a planter to put the dirt in. And then up here, the last one. So a stick marking the post hole and a planter to put the dirt in. Let me show you what I did to the planters to make these ready. So I've learned with these big planters that you gotta really dig some drainage. I went, or drill, drill for some drainage. You really gotta drill for some drainage. So I drilled around the base as well as a couple holes in the bottom. Now, before I call these planters ready, I'll have to put some rock or some easy draining material in the bottom. But for now, I can put a post hole worth of dirt in each of these, and it'll be light enough that I can carry it around, move it around, mix it from planter to planter. Because over in the corner here, I've got, oops, over here in the corner, I've got several more planters that need dirt. So we did a little math ahead of time to see about how we're gonna do these posts. And Katie and I calculated that the hypotenuse across the rectangle should be about 223 inches. Now we checked the hypotenuse of our stake layout last night and we were not at 223. Uh, one edge was, one hypotenuse was 228 and one hypotenuse was 226. Uh, so definitely uh, the corners are not perfectly squared off. That's not too much of a worry to us. 
uh, because we have a way of making sure that it's squared off when we put the final posts in and set them. But we did end up having a good discussion about it. So we ended up having a discussion about how we're going to make sure that the posts are adequately squared so that we can do a functional build. Uh, Katie reminded me there's no such thing as a perfectly squared off corner and, and that is so true. So there's a certain tolerance that there has to be uh, for things to be out of square. However, I also know that if I dig a post hole and it's not reasonably close, um, I do have trouble getting... I, if I dig a post hole and it's not reasonably close to where I need it to be, um, I have trouble setting that post for the larger structure. So we're taking precautions this time um, about digging the posts and we're going to go ahead and, and, well, we got a little trick we've devised to make sure we set our posts uh, plumb and square enough for the build we're doing. Um, but before all that, I want to double check my measurements one more time to be sure I'm satisfied with how uh, much out of tolerance our measurements actually are for these post holes. Make sure I'm satisfied that those will still actually work for the post holes that we're going to dig. Worst case scenario, I just have to dig the holes a little bit bigger uh, to accommodate the situation. All right, so it's time to do some digging. With the rain last night, I hope this actually works out. All right, starting from this end, this diagonal is 228, exactly what we remember last night. So 228 inches. Remember we were aiming for 223. All right, from this end, we're double checking the diagonal just one more time before we dig, and it's 226 inches. And remember, with the math, we calculated it should be 223. Now. I'm not saying that I think I've laid this here uh, tape measure down perfectly along the hypotenuse. Plus there's a few weeds in the way. Maybe a little bit of a, uh, a mound in the middle that might be contributing to the length. But with 226 on one and 228 on this one, when I think about the way the hypotenuse works, that being off by about five inches is a thing. But I think the ultimate diameter of the hole being between 9 and 11 inches is going to accommodate the hypotenuse being off a little bit. So I might be in a position where we have to dig the holes a little extra large around to set the posts properly. Uh, a note on this tape measure, we bought the cheap $5 tape measure. We maybe should have bought the nicer one. This tape measure has been a real struggle to work with. All right, I got the first hole dug and it's nine inches across, which is about right. Uh, I can always make it a little wider if I need to later. And let me show you something else. There's a measuring stick on the side of this post hole digger and I got it a little bit deeper than 18 inches. All right, so I can put some fill in the bottom and level it out against the other holes by going a little extra deep. I bought some gravel to do that. Now, I'm gonna take this post hole digger out. The uh, quality of the dirt pulled out of the, dig the hole was very, very poor, uh, like I expected. It's mostly clay. So I'm gonna have to add a lot of compost and some vermiculite, maybe even a little bit of sand to make it salvageable. Now I've got this uh, planter with poor soil and what I'm gonna do is, now of course I can't plant in it yet, but that's okay. I'm not ready to plant in it anyway. I'm gonna use this planter to cover up the hole. So now the hole is covered and people will walk around the planter and nobody will get their foot caught in the hole, such as a family member or a puppy dog. Now to do another hole.
Well, it's nighttime, and I am so proud of Katie and I. We have built Stonehenge. Let me show you what we put in the ground. Yeah, it's literally too dark to see anything, but there's a 10-foot post there, a 10-foot post there, a 10-foot post there, and then one, two, and a third post that is completely obscured right there. All right, we're going to go ahead and fill you in on what we did tomorrow morning because now it's time to go get a drink. Becky, I'm going to uh, do a little closure on the, the post setting, okay? Alright, so it's the day after we've set the post. Katie and I are out here working on the pergola. Um, so now you know what we're making. And uh, I want to show you the last little thing that uh, we did that helped us get these posts set and ready for the beams that we're putting up tonight. So I made this little template to help me consistently drill the holes in the posts in a pattern that would ensure that my carriage bolts will not run into each other when we attach them. I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like up on top of the post. We pre-drilled the posts before we set them. I don't think you can see on that one, so I'll come over here. On this post, see a pink X and the pink X on those holes represents following the pink holes on this template. The black X on that side of the post where you can already see carriage bolts, that represents the black holes on these templates. And so we pre-drilled all the posts so that way we only had to drill through the 2x8 when it was time to start setting beams.